decided to teach through this letter to teach them. After Paul had started that church in Corinth, they became arrogant and stubborn and know it all. I don't need I don't need any more teaching. We know it all. We know everything. And to be honest, they almost ruined their reputation. Very close to ruining their reputation as Christians. They started to brag about silly things like who baptized them. They were bragging about things like that and boasting. And they got into debates and Paul decided that he needed to stop this. And so he wrote them a letter to set them straight. So we want to start with 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 and 19.
had finally submitted to the state, to their government, to show the public that I had submitted to the state in death. So I want you to remember that. So Jesus is saying to pick up your cross and follow me. So when he said that, he meant when you want to follow my path, you want to become a true disciple, you must be willing every day your stubborn will, your preferences, your desires, you must every day throw those away, pick up the cross, and show that you have accepted the Father's will just as Jesus had. Does that make sense? Does it make sense? Is it clear? We must pick up our cross and show people that we have surrendered to Christ and that we will follow him from then on. Jesus said, as I follow the Father, you follow me. But people who are not believers, they think that that message is foolish. Foolish. The Son of God would willingly die for sinners? And then those saved sinners would willingly die to themselves and become disciples to follow Jesus? What a foolish story! That's what people think. Interestingly, Paul uses the word, the Greek word, Maria, for the word foolish which is a form of another word, M-O-R-O-S, morose. And we get our English word moron from this. You know what that word means. It's not a nice English word, though. It's not nice. It's an insult. It's an insulting word. In English, it would mean stupid, idiot, dumb, that kind of meaning. So from the world perspective, only a moron would believe the story about the cross. From the... That's what the world would believe. Only a moron would believe the story of being a self-sacrificing and following Jesus. But, for a believer, it's the story that's inspiring. It's and it makes sense. My desire is my wants to give it up, to give it to Christ and to take up the cross and follow and believe and trust because we know that God's way is the best way and my way is not. Your way is the best. And it makes sense to us, to believers. We know that the cross is Powerful. How many of you wear cross, crosses jewelry? Anyone have one on today? Do you have yours at home? The cross. You have one? And I'm not criticizing Catholicism. I'm just trying to explain something. Catholics will wear a cross, a crucifix with the Jesus still on the cross. And as Christians, we wear a cross without Jesus. So Catholics, theirs, theirs represents Jesus' suffering and ours represents his resurrection. But the Sonic Jews do not use crosses because to them it represents Roman punishment. Yes, they are followers of Jesus. But they do not wear or show 
crosses as decorations because to them it represents the Roman oppression. But to us, the cross represents power. It's powerful. Only people, it's only the world's perspective that doesn't believe that a man would die on the cross for you and I. That's impossible. You know, in the Old Testament, there's many stories of God calling Israel to repentance and holiness. But, but what did Israel do? They would reject him. It sounds familiar. It happens to us too. We think we can fix it ourselves, right? They thought they could fix it. Israel thought, we can take care of it. And every time they were defeated, and then they would repent, and then they would fall away again and think that they could take things into their own hands and they were defeated. This happens over and over and over again because they were so stubborn. They would not surrender completely to God and His leading. We must fully, fully surrender. Not half. Half means you're not believing the Jesus' story. Not partial, not partial surrender, but full surrender to Jesus. You know, sometimes it can feel like the Christian message is well, a little strange, a little odd. I surrender to the cross, to Jesus. But you know what? Sometimes I like to take care of things myself. I like to worship things more than God. I like to do things my way. Then we are not fully believing in Jesus' message. When we believe yeah, when we believe fully, we will have a different kind of response. I want you to look at verses 20 through 25. It says, Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believed. Jews demanded signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Today you see many, many people trying to figure out where is heaven? Where is God? You've got intelligent astronomers using expensive, powerful telescopes looking for heaven, looking into the universe and saying, I mean, think of the millions and billions of dollars that have been spent looking through telescopes, sending out rockets, looking for heaven. But they'll never find it. They haven't found it. And then you've got scientists using powerful microscopes to look at the smallest particles of matter, things we, that aren't even visible to our eyes. So we're looking at the skies. It's impossible. We can't find God in those places. The fact is, it is only 
through the foolishness of the message that we can know God. That's the only way. The only way to know Him fully. The only way to know the gospel is to know Him and to know His truth. That story will feel foolish to those who do not believe. So Paul explains that the Jews, you know, there was, and that the, the Greeks were confused because it was a simple message and it was too simple. The Jews wanted proof. That was their personality. They wanted proof. They wanted to see signs and wonders before they would believe. And the Jews represent religion and ritual in their own thoughts, in their own ways. Remember we talked about how the Jews would put up fences around the scripture and that they would add things to try to make, so that it would make sense to them? The Greeks, on the other hand, pursued rationalistic explanations, intellectual and logical proofs. The Greeks were the Gentiles, and they represented philosophy. They were lovers of wisdom, and they were always seeking truth. Both of these responses to the gospel seem, did not make sense from the human perspective. Remember, the Jews were looking for a king to save them from the Roman Empire. Remember? But instead, Jesus, I'm going to stop saying Jews and say non-believing Jews because many Jews do believe in Jesus. And I'm one of those. So non-believing Jews. They were looking for a king to save them from the Roman Empire. But instead, Jesus did miracles in small groups. He didn't come to save them from the rule of the empire, but he came to save them from people who were disenfranchised, same people who were despised, who were rejected, who were poor, people who had disabilities, people that society did not pay attention to. He came to help them. It's so cool. And he preached repentance and holiness and peace. He wanted people to sacrifice themselves and to follow God's will and to follow him to the cross if necessary. You know, you know we've heard stories of martyrs, people who have died for the cause of Jesus. But a poor preacher from Nazareth, wow, was a disappointment in the eyes of the Jews. And Jesus was a stumbling block because they were looking for, had the wrong expectations. The Greeks searched for wisdom and took a different path, but they both ended in defeat. They were looking for a philosopher king, a wise seer sage, who could satisfy their needs for utopian society. But instead, they found a divine ruler who humbled himself to be born poor, grew up and spent three years speaking parables about the kingdom to come. Jesus was crucified, Messiah. It was just too illogical to understand. Some people, I'm saying this in quotes, some people say philosophy is like a blind man in a dark room looking for a black cat that's not there. 
I mean, philosophy is blind. I mean, he's just kind of looking for answers, but in the wrong place. They can't believe that Jesus' message is true. So let's go to verse 26 through 31. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were influential. And not many of you were born of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of the world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one can boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The truth of the gospel's power should have been evident to them. It has power, right? There was plenty of evidence. From then to day, but still people think it's bizarre, it's odd that you could believe that message. It's weird. You're odd if you believe the message of Jesus Christ. We don't believe that message because we are intellectuals and we have wisdom and we have a better education and blah, 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 blah. But Paul says, no. The people who are wise and intellectual and famous People, he was telling the people, well, most of you were not that. But it doesn't matter whether you're rich and famous, homeless, a refugee. We all live in the dumps of despair. We're all the same. There's no one better than another. No one. or not believe it, it doesn't mean you're more educated or less educated. We're all the same. We all are the same without Jesus. But God, in His mercy, in His grace, He comes and He plucks us out. brings us out of the garbage and He molds us and He shapes us and He loves us encourages us. I praise God and thank Him for that. He teaches us that no one can boast. No one. At the cross, we, it is a level playing field. There should be no one that makes you feel less important than another. If, you, if someone says it, it's a lie. If someone makes you feel less educated, it's a lie. If someone's more fluent in their sign, more skilled, and that makes them better, that's a lie. Because at the cross, that all, God accepted all the people that society had rejected. We are the same at the cross. We are equal. God brings us at the cross. We receive forgiveness automatically. All of us are the same. And God does not have patience or tolerance for the proud, the arrogant, or the self-sufficient. God will humble them and make them acknowledge their poverty. Have anyone, have you seen the movie The Hero? There's so many. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you enjoy it, it's okay. But the world gets so excited about a hero. 
heroes. They're looking for heroes, but God seeks humble people. The world praises power, prestige, and wealth. But God turns our attention to Christ, the gentlest, most humble person who has ever lived. By ourselves, we are nothing. But in Christ, we are valuable. We're valuable because God is in us. Therefore, when we boast, we can only bounce, boast about God on ourselves. I praise God for you. I praise God that we have this place of worship. It's not, I'm not patting myself on the back. So don't be foolish. And question your existence and in all that God has done. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Live as a believer that believes that God is there and that He has provided a way of salvation and live like it and talk like it. Believe it. Don't be afraid or embarrassed. Be proud. Believe in God and the power of the Believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in the gift of the Holy Spirit. Believe it. Act like it. Speak like it. Don't be ashamed or shy or live like you don't believe it. And when you succeed, don't boast. Your succeed, success is not from you. It's from God. He gives you that success. He gives you the skills. Thank God for the skills that He gives you. We each have varying skills and they're from God. So act like it and be believe it. That Hebrew skills are from Him. I know there's a lot of foolish people out there that are negative. And when you speak for the Christian message, they will like a death club, it's forbidden to talk about Jesus at the death club, right? I remember when Eugene, we know Eugene, remember Eugene Hughes? You, you remember. He did go to death club, and he would preach the message, and they got mad and kicked him out, and he was so sweet. He had a brain, even though he had a brain tumor, he would go and he would preach and teach the message, and they would reject it, get more mad. I know there's a lot of people out there like that. I know there are people who feel the message is foolish. So when you begin to speak, they return with science and things like that. Sometimes you even may begin to doubt yourself. We have to remember People who have been criticizing the Christian message, it's been happening since the first century. It's nothing new, nothing new at all. There was a famous a Christian apologist from the year 210 AD. That's a long time ago. His name was Tert Tertullian. And he would defend the Christian message. I think I have the name and picture of Tertullian up there. Yeah, that's the name right there. And he had a fierce, he would go out and carry the Bible, and he would defend the gospel, and he would have fierce debates with the others, people who were against the gospel, heretics of the time. And he has a, a quote that's so cool. Said, if people had made up this story, if it was a made up story, they would have not made up a story that was so hard to believe. They would not say the Son of God came down, that he was man and God, and that he was willing to go to the cross and 
be crucified and to die a horrific death on a cross for six hours and that if you believe in him that you would be saved and be forgiven and then you would have eternal life in heaven. If somebody really made up that story, if it's a human story, they would have not made up that story. They would have made up something cool, really sophisticated, that would be easy for people to believe. Right? So, Tertullian said that obviously the Christian message is true. Because people, believers, because that story is so hard to believe. It's not something that could have been made up by humans. So obviously, it's, it, humans would not have made up a story so hard to believe. So the quote, I think, is so cool. So it doesn't matter if people think it's impossible that a person was willing to die on the cross for you and me. We need to be committed, recommit ourselves to follow. Doesn't matter where we're at, yet socializing with friends or family, believers, non-believers, it doesn't matter. Maybe someone will say, don't tell me about Jesus' message. It is ridiculous. It's foolishness. I encourage you to pick up your cross. And when you go out, pick up the cross. That is proof that you have sacrificed and given yourself to Jesus. And it will be proved to the world as well that you have decided to be a follower of Jesus. Recommit yourself. Be strong. Be more proud. More bold to speak out. Even though you know people think that it's foolishness. Amen? 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 I know it's a little bit warm. I'm sorry. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that you are our creator, that you've created everything in this world. Thank you for that. And Lord, we pray that we will learn and know what it means to pick up our cross, and that it will be proof that we are believers in Jesus Christ, and that we have our followers of you, that we are fully committed that when we go out, we can preach the message that we follow His truth, we follow His guidance, we follow His message, and we're not shy anymore, that we're bold and fully committed, and that we know what it looks like to follow, to pick up our cross and follow. And that those who see us that those who see us, that we 